Yes, Maria, please. Just... Oh, it's just because I, I can't see your. Uh, oh, la, la. sorry. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, it's uh, Margaret Stainsforth Dotti. She's going to present. Sorry for the <coughs> pronunciation. Um, she will pre uh, present the Swedish Biodiversity Data Infrastructure, the SBDI, um, some insight from the Swedish ALA installation. Thank you. Margaret. Thank you, I'm Sophie. Hi, everyone. Um, I um, I am here. I'm the director of SPDI, uh, fairly new in a job, and also I'm a biologist and not a developer. So I hope you don't mind that I have little cheat notes with me, just so that my presentation makes sense. Am I talking too loudly? Uh, so, but let's start with SPDI. SPDI is an e-infrastructure, as you can imagine, that kind of um, provides access to biodiversity data openly and freely, of course. It's a consortium of 11 partners, and it's uh, funded by the Swedish Research Council. And the way it works in Sweden is that GPIF is actually a part of SPDI, or rather SPDI kind of hosts GPIF in Sweden. Um, SPDI is a young infrastructure. It was only launched in 2021, but it builds on decades of biodiversity work in Sweden. Uh, so bringing together all of these different partners. SPDI rests on these kind of three pillars, of course, data, uh, both for you to provide data and for you to use this data, access it. We also develop uh, tools and um, and uh, kind of training on how to use these tools so that you can analyze and visualize your data in an easy way through the platform. And we also have kind of a dedicated support so that it's easier, e easy for our users and data providers to actually want to use our platform and put their data there, get their data there and use all of our services. So that's SPDI uh, today, but if I'm going to talk about how SPDI uses ALA platform software in particular, then we have to go a little bit back. So one of the main predecessors of SPDI was called uh, BioAtlas Sweden, and existed for, for many, many years. And, uh, and in the summer of 2016, it launched um, a biodiversity data portal that was based on the ALA software. So actually, SPDI slash BioAtlas were uh, quite early adopters of, of um, ALA. And this was actually in, uh, inspired by attending a TEDway conference and seeing a demo of the French portal, which I think was the first country to adopt Okay, after Spain, sorry, then, okay, I'll correct that. <laughs> what, uh, what is special maybe about um, uh, BioAtlas, uh, SPDI, how they use the ALA, is that we pioneered the uh, container-based uh, employment. And that means that we've run the different uh, modules of ALA, of the ALA platform, um, as uh, Docker services. And what does that mean? A Docker uh, container is a self-contained package with all of the necessary components to run a software application. And this includes code and systems tools and libraries and runtime and setting and everything. So uh, co the, container, uh, the containers are isolated from the host system and this makes them highly portable and easy to uh, deploy across different environments. And that's everything from a developer's laptop to uh, production servers in the cloud. So in the beginning, before we had funding, the uh, BioAtlas Sweden was running the services on a single kind of virtual machine in the basement of, uh, of our museum in, in Sweden. And then when we were funded, which uh, led to the launch of SPDI in 2001, we had the money to move to um, say, uh, a cloud service uh, called SafeSpring, doesn't matter, perhaps. 
And being on a, on a cloud service like that, uh, that means that resources can be allocated as required and we can create as many virtual machines as we need of different sizes. And that includes uh, CPU, memory, and stuff like that. And at the moment, or now, uh, the SPDI platform is deployed using Docker Swarm on a multi-host and host, I mean machine, environment, uh, where uh, we as customers, we can allocate those resources on our own, pick and choose, through access uh, to the OpenStack um, environment. So Docker Swarm is like a clustering and an orchestrating solution for Docker, enabling the creation and management of a of Docker nodes, again, machines. And the advantage availability, of course, high availability, uh, but there are some additional complexities uh, of adding, of deploying it like that. But my developer didn't explain those to me, so. <laughs> um, now to some, maybe some specific projects that we've been uh, developing using the uh, uh, ALA system. Our team in, uh, at Lund University, uh, they have been actively deploying and adapting the ALA BioCollect uh, component for their systematic monitoring projects. And then, and then we have the uh, ASV, the Swedish Amplicon sequence variant, and that's an interface uh, to sequence-based observations. Uh, and this ASV portal was developed from scratch by the, by the Swedish team, uh, working with metabarcoding data. And I have to say that one of the key people of that is uh, Maria Praker, and she explained it in great detail in Symposium 8 this morning. So if any of you saw that, she is much better at explaining it to me, but I'm showing you a nice <laughs> graph here of the, uh, the flow of meta um, barcoding data. Um, so the portal is, this portal uh, in particular is integrated with the ALA-based components uh, used for searching and viewing records as well as for um, authentication. Um, so these are some examples and some um, explanation on how we do it. And I wanted to just have kind of a, a next step. This is maybe something we can talk about in the discussion um, session af after, is that we are all facing this kind of deluge of data that is coming our way with all of these new tools and methods that are being uh, developed with uh, genetic data, with eDNA and all of this kind of stuff. So like we are really looking to be able to scale up. Um, and if you happen to be in Sweden in, uh, <laughs> in late January, we're having our SPDI days to, um, to discuss exactly this. So you're welcome to, to drop by. Uh, and I'm sure I have plenty of time, but that's all I have for you for now. <laughs> Okay, let's throw it to the floor. Are there any questions for Margaret? No? Hopefully not any very technical questions. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anything online? Richard? 